Okay, perfect. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everybody from wherever you may be joining us from. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar towards the effective management of marine mammals in West Africa, the Marine Mammals Management Toolkit. Um, my name is Tom Dallison and I'm part of the Marine Mammals Twinning, um, which is part of the EU-funded Ocean Governance Project, um, and I will be taking you through uh, this webinar uh, this afternoon. So without further ado, let's move into some housekeeping. So for any urgent technical issues, please do use the chat function. Um, this is a fairly informal webinar, so if you do wish to speak or if you have questions, please do raise your hand. We do have some time set aside in the agenda um, to allow for some questions and answers, but uh, we'll also try and answer your questions um, in the chat throughout the webinar. Uh, for this webinar, we are providing uh, a French and Portuguese interpretation, um, so please do use the interpretation uh, button at the, at the bottom of the Zoom chat to access your various uh, interpretation channels. Um, if you are going to speak, and for the speakers on the call, if you do have a headset, um, it's recommended. And also for those listening, um, a headset is also recommended for best quality uh, audio experience. Um, and also uh, this webinar is being recorded. And so do, so if you do wish um, not to be featured um, in the recording, then please do turn off your uh, camera. And just for um, everybody's clarity, you can access your um, audio streams for your interpretation um, at the lower uh, banner of your Zoom um, of your Zoom window. So just a very quick review of the agenda before we get started. Um, so agenda overview and housekeeping um, as we're going through now, um, and then I'll happily give the floor for an introduction from the co-host. Um, so we'll have from the Abidjan Convention, um, Dr. Jacob Isola, um, and also from um, PRCM, uh, we'll welcome Dr. Demba uh, Mariso uh, as well. We'll then move into the importance and conservation of marine mammals in, in West Africa and hear a case study um, from Cameroon. Um, and I'll introduce um, Aristide uh, Takukum Kamla from the African Marine Mammal Conservation Organization um, to give us an, uh, an overview. Um, around marine mammals in the region. I'll then hand over to our core expert, Francis Storb with the Marine Mammal Twinning for an introduction to the toolkit. And then myself, I will provide you with a, a, a quick overview or a guide to the self-assessment tool and how you can uh, utilize it to hopefully improve um, the management of marine mammals um, in your localities. We'll then hear a testimonial from Zanzibar from our colleague Makami Makami, um, who's recently used the self-assessment tool to assess um, multiple MPAs in the region. And then we'll open up to question and answer sessions. And then we'll go back to our co-hosts to hopefully round us off um, on a very productive and successful webinar. So with all that being said, um, I will also ask if people can uh, keep themselves muted as well um, throughout the course of the webinar. That would be very much appreciated. So without further ado, um, it's my pleasure to be able to give the floor to Dr. Yakub Isola for an introduction from the Abidjan Convention. And Dr. Yakub, if you're here, um, the floor is yours. Good morning, good afternoon. Bonjour, bonsoir tout le monde. I will do my introduction in French. Et bonsoir tout le monde. Je prends la parole au nom de la Convention d'Abidjan. Je suis Dr. Yacoub Sola, expert en charge de la gestion intégrée des zones marines et côtières au niveau du projet MIE dans la Convention d'Abidjan. Alors, la Convention d'Abidjan s'associe avec uh, le PRCM et le projet Mamine, uh, Marine Mammal Management Toolkit pour participer à cet événement qui est relatif à la protection de la biodiversité marine au niveau de la zone euh, des pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest et de l'Afrique centrale et australe, qui sont les pays couverts par la Convention d'Abidjan. Il faut dire que cette intervention vient en complément des autres initiatives qui ont été déjà prises par la Convention d'Abidjan. Elle a initié plusieurs outils de protection de la zone marine et côtière et de protection de la biodiversité. Au nom de ces outils-là, on peut citer les guides sur la planification spatiale marine, les guides sur la 
l'état de la zone marine et côtière et également euh, différents autres outils de politique tels que des protocoles additionnels pour la gestion des, des pollutions de façon générale, des protocoles additionnels pour la gestion même de, de l'érosion côtière et toute forme de menace. Et actuellement, elle est en train même de développer un protocole additionnel sur la, les aires marines protégées. Alors, tous ces outils que la Convention d'habitants développe sont des outils complémentaires qui viennent en tout cas apporter des éléments de politique et de gouvernance de façon générale à la protection des zones marines et côtières. Donc, l'outil que nous sommes en train de développer, ou du moins ce qui va être promulgué à partir de cette formation, va être un outil complémentaire. Et c'est vraiment avec tout un plaisir que nous nous associons et également à, à la, au projet Océan Gouvernance pour pouvoir mener cette initiative qui va renforcer les outils de gouvernement à ce webinaire et nous disons merci et bonjour à tout le monde. Merci. Thank you very much, Shiku, for those introductory remarks. Um, and I agree. Hopefully, we will have a, a very productive meeting to discuss um, all around the, the, the management of marine mammals and also the marine mammals management toolkit as well. And hopefully, we can um, connect some managers and share some experiences and exchange some knowledge as well for the benefit of marine mammals in the region. So thank you very much again for your, um, for your introductory remarks. So following on from, from Dr. Yuku, then I, I, I would like to pass over um, the floor to Dr. Dem Demba uh, Mariso uh, from PRCM um, for an introduction to the regional partnership for the conservation of the coastal and marine So, So uh, Dr. Demba Mariso, the floor is yours. Bonjour tout le monde, c'est Dr. Demba Mariko et non Mariso. Euh, merci de venir à ce, à ce webinaire euh, sur ce, cette bataille d'outils. Euh, le PRCM, le partenariat régional pour la conservation de la zone marine et côtière de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, donc qui est une organisation qui euh, fédère euh, différents acteurs euh, étatiques, sociétés civiles, privées. Euh, recherche, etc., et qui ont en commun à la conservation de la zone marine et côtière de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Et euh, récemment, nous avons, avec la CMS, euh, animé, co-organisé euh, la semaine de la mégaphone. Donc, euh, la semaine de la mégaphone, euh, où euh, différentes espèces ont été, euh, pour lesquelles des plans d'action ont été euh, élaborés notamment les tortues, les dauphins, etc. Euh, pour nous, euh, l'organisation de ce webinaire euh, sur cette, euh, cette boîte à outils euh, vient euh, prolonger, compléter un peu de tout l'effort que nous sommes en train de faire dans la sous-région euh, en matière de conservation donc des, des mammifères marins. Nous travaillons déjà avec beaucoup de, de partenaires nationaux, régionaux et internationaux sur la problématique, mais il est important, euh, évidemment, de prendre connaissance de cette boîte à outils euh, qui pourra certainement euh, intéresser les, les différents acteurs, les différentes parties prenantes euh, qui interviennent sur ces, ces questions. Et je pense qu'à l'issue de cette, euh, ce webinaire, donc, euh, il y aura des échanges euh, très fructueux euh, sur euh, cette, euh, ces différents outils, mais également les différentes parties prenantes pourraient éventuellement en bénéficier et, et éventuellement les utiliser euh, dans le cadre de, de leurs activités. Je tiens à remercier chacun d'entre vous et euh, à, à vous souhaiter la bienvenue à ce webinaire et euh, à tous les co-organisateurs de ce webinaire. Merci. Thank you very much, Dr. Dembe Mariko, and my apologies for the mispronunciation, but thank you again for your, um, for your introductory remarks and, again, 
um, bringing together stakeholders and exchanging experiences and knowledge is is is, is a core value of these um, of these webinars. So again, thank you very much for introductory remarks, and um, really looking forward to the discussions um, throughout this webinar. So that brings us quite nicely into our. Uh, third presenter. So I'm very pleased to provide uh, the floor to um, Aris Kamler, who will provide us with uh, the conservation and importance of marine mammals in the in West Africa, specifically focusing on a case study um, from Cameroon. Um, and Aris is from the African Marine Mammal Conservation Organization. So um, Aris we can see your screen and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? We can Excellent. hear you and see you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, today, my I think I'm gonna give my presentation in the in French since uh, we are in the West Africa, the majority speaking French. So I'm gonna give my presentation in French. Uh, merci beaucoup de m'avoir de m'avoir invité dans dans ce webinaire et uh, et oui, aujourd'hui ma présentation est axée sur uh, l'importance des mammifères marines uh, marins uh, en Afrique de l'Ouest et je vais parler uh, plus spécifiquement du du cas du Cameroun après avoir parlé des généralités. Alors je suis Aristide Taku Kamkamla, je suis le président uh, fondateur de l'organisation African Marine Mama Conservation Organization euh, basée au Cameroun et nous travaillons pour la protection effectivement des mammifères marins euh, d'abord au Cameroun et aussi dans quelques euh, pays de la sous-région. Alors, avant de... Je que mon curseur avance une seconde. OK. Donc, avant de euh, d'entrer de, dans l'importance des mammifères marins, j'avais voulu d'abord qu'on soit tous à la même page euh, en sachant qu'est-ce que c'est qu -ce que, qu -ce que qu'un mammifère marin. Alors, quand on suit dans le thème mammifère marin, il y a d'abord le thème mammifère. C'est quoi un mammifère? C'est tout simplement des animaux qui allaitent leurs petits avec, euh, avec du lait provenant des glandes mammaires. Et ce sont des animaux aussi qui ont des poils, même si au niveau des mammifères marins, il y a quelques exceptions pour, euh, chez les, chez les, les baleines euh, qui n'ont de poils qu'au niveau, au, à la naissance, mais quand ils deviennent plus grands, ils perdent leurs poils. Et aussi euh, au fait qu'ils ont une respiration aérienne. Et ceci fait que, euh, puisqu'ils vivent, ils sont dans l'eau, ils sont obligés de remonter à la surface, comme vous voyez la photo en filigrane, un lamantin qui euh, est en train de faire surface pour pouvoir respirer. Ça, c'est parce que c'est un mammifère. Quoi qu'il vit dans l'eau, il n'est pas un poisson, il, est, il reste un mammifère, donc il a besoin de, euh, de cette, euh, cette atmosphérique-là. Et aussi, euh, marin, dont le thème marin renvoie juste à la mer, à l'océan, aux estuaires, bref, aux eaux, euh, aux eaux, euh, aux eaux salées ou saumâtres. Alors, il est tiens à noter que dans le monde, il existe près de euh, 129, disons 135, es, euh, 34 espèces de mammifères marins, parmi lesquelles 5 espèces sont éteintes. Et, euh, et en Afrique, au niveau de l'Afrique, nous avons de l'Afrique, de la côte euh, atlantique africaine, euh, nous enregistrons euh, près de 14 espèces de grands cétacés et parmi lesquelles les plus fréquents sont elles, euh, la, la, la baleine à bosse de la, euh, la baleine à bosse de l'Atlantique et aussi il faut remarquer qu'il y a la présence des, des orcas au niveau du Sénégal j'étais très impressionné euh, récemment récemment de découvrir à travers mes, mes collaborateurs au niveau du Sénégal qu'ils ont des orcas à ce niveau là et euh, c'est important de noter que euh, euh, le, la plus grande baleine euh, peut peser jusqu'à 200 tonnes. Donc, euh, c'est à peu près, euh, près de 40 fois le poids d'un véhicule et peut mesurer jusqu'à 30 mètres. Et on a aussi, euh, au niveau de la côte atlantique africaine, près de 30 espèces, n'est-ce pas, de petits cétacés, en plus du lamantin. Et j'aimerais attirer l'attention sur euh, deux espèces particulières qui euh, deux espèces particulières. Euh, ces espèces, parce que ces espèces, euh, ils sont euh, très menacés et partagent le même habitat. Il s'agit du dauphin à bourse de, euh, de l'Atlantique et du lamantin d'Afrique euh, qu'on retrouve sur toute euh, la côte euh, ouest africaine allant de la Mauritanie jusqu'au euh, jusqu niveau de l'Angola, sur toute la côte. 
Donc, parce que ces espèces euh, sont de, vivent dans des eaux peu profondes, ils partagent le même habitat que euh, l'environnement de pêche industrielle et l'environnement de pêche artisanale, raison pour laquelle, n'est-ce pas, ces espèces sont soumises à des, à des menaces telles que la pêche euh, accidentelle. Euh, déjà au niveau du Cameroun, à plus de deux reprises, ce dauphin à bourse de l'Atlantique, qui est une espèce en danger critique d'extinction, a été documenté en deux fois en moins de deux ans sur, au même, euh, au même, euh, dans la même localité où ils ont été capturés accidentellement dans les filets de pêche euh, de, 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 de la pêche artis, euh, artisanale. Alors, l'autre menace que euh, peut subir ces espèces, c'est le braconnage. Et ça, c'est surtout le lamentin d'Afrique qui, euh, qui, qui, qui en paye les frais. Donc, il y a, au niveau du Cameroun, on a près de euh, 20, 20 individus de lamentin qui sont braconnés chaque année. Au Nigeria, ce nombre est un peu plus, euh, euh, plus élevé parce qu'il y a notre collaboratrice Lucie Kitt qui a euh, mis là-bas un réseau qui documente les les, les lamentins qui sont, euh, qui sont tués ou bien capturés. Et euh, je pense qu'elle elle en a de nombreux, au moins 300 lamentins tués au niveau du Nigeria. Donc, c'est une menace très importante. Et une autre menace euh, euh, un peu plus localisée, et, et qu'on voit beaucoup plus au niveau du Cameroun, c'est la prolifération des plantes invasives. On a cette plante qu'on appelle euh, Salvenia molesta qui a commencé à proliférer au niveau du lac Ossa en 2016 et en 2021. Cette plante couvrait près de 50% de la superficie du lac avec un impact important sur cette espèce parce que lorsque cette plante a envahi euh, le lac, on ne voyait plus les lamentins jusqu'à ce que nous mettons en place une méthode biologique qui a permis de réduire de près de 70% la couverture de cette plante et désormais on commence à voir des lament les lamentaires revenir petit à petit. Donc la menace, euh, la dégradation de l'habitat euh, à travers l'invasion des espèces, euh, des, des espèces euh, très proliférantes peut constituer aussi une, une menace importante pour les espèces de mammifères euh, marins. Alors, une autre euh, menace euh, importante, c'est aussi ces filets, les filets abandonnés euh, et la pêche excessive, ces filets abandonnés qui se, et, les et même les déchets plastiques qui se retrouvent au niveau des mangroves, au niveau des, euh, au niveau de, 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 pas, des eaux, euh, des eaux, de, de, des eaux de la, de la côte. Euh, pouvoir peut parfois piéger euh, l'animal et ce qui va se retrouver, n'est-ce pas, euh, euh, en absence de l'oxygène puisqu'il ne peut plus euh, faire surface. Alors, parlons maintenant de l'importance des, des mammifères marins. Pourquoi est-ce qu'il faut, il faut protéger les, les mammifères marins? Pourquoi est-ce qu'ils sont importants pour notre environnement, surtout au niveau de, euh, de l'Afrique de euh, l'Ouest? Alors, le, euh, la première importance, c'est d'abord que ce, ces animaux, ce sont des, euh, des animaux qui font des plongées profondes, vont dans des, euh, une, une espèce comme la baleine à, la, la baleine à bouche de l'Atlantique peut plonger jusqu'à 700 mètres de profondeur. Et en allant dans ces profondeurs, elle va euh, euh, remuer les nutriments qui étaient piégés au fond et les ramener vers la surface. Et c'est important pour les zones où il n'y a pas assez de upwelling comme le Cameroun. Et il est aussi important de noter que euh, euh, les, euh, les espèces comme le lamentin d'Afrique, ils euh, équilibrent, n'est-ce pas, l'écosystème à travers l'alimentation. Le, le, Par exemple, en consommant des, grosses, des grandes quantités de, de plantes invasives, comme vous voyez dans la photo, nous avons une plante qu'on appelle... Euh, euh, la chassinte d'eau, qui est une plante très invasive. Alors, les lamentins peuvent manger jusqu'à euh, 10% de leur poids, donc qui représente à peu près 50 kg de nourriture qu'ils peuvent ingérer par jour. Et du coup, cette euh, activité écologique du lamentin contribue, donc, n'est-ce pas, à équilibrer, n'est-ce pas, l'écosystème. Euh, il est aussi important de noter que les déjections, n'est-ce pas, faites par ces animaux-là sont très riches. Moi, personnellement, j'ai vu euh, les, les, des poissons se nourrir directement sur des fesses que les lamentins avaient laissées flottant à la surface de l'eau. Alors, alors euh, euh, Plusieurs d'entre vous connaissent euh, l'activité du whale watching organisée par euh, Nature Tropicale au niveau du Bénin. Donc, euh, cela prouve à suffisance euh, l'importance économique euh, du, des, des, des mammifères marins, surtout des, la, des baleines. 
qui pour moi reste encore très peu exploité, dont nous avons euh, les deux cas que je connais, c'est euh, Nature Tropicale au Bénin euh, et aussi euh, euh, Renatura au niveau du, du Congo. Donc je pense que les, les baleines sont une grosse opportunité pour, n'est-ce pas, pour nos pays pour pouvoir lever des fonds à travers l'écotourisme. Alors, il y a aussi une valeur culturelle, donc je ne vais pas m'attarder dessus. Donc, lorsque on remarque que dans, la, toutes les, dans tous les pays côtiers, euh, il y a les, 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 les populations ont une culture qui est attachée non seulement aux baleines et même aussi euh, aux petits cétacés. Alors, parlons un peu plus euh, précisément du Cameroun. Donc, le Cameroun, euh, c'est un pays qui a seulement 400 km de, de côte avec euh, une euh, ZEE de 6, euh, 16 000 km carrés. Et là, nous avons, pour étudier le, les mammifères marins, nous avons plusieurs approches à, euh, en passant par, n'est-ce pas, des interviews que nous mettons auprès des pêcheurs parce que nous savons que les pêcheurs ont une euh, connaissance très importante de ces espèces-là. Malheureusement, il y a très peu de scientifiques euh, de marins au niveau de l'Afrique la, euh, de l'Ouest. Euh, du coup, euh, on se base fortement sur la connaissance traditionnelle pour avoir, n'est-ce pas, mettre des fondements de, de, la, de la science euh, marine concernant ces espèces-là. Et euh, c'est aussi parce que nous, euh, qu nous, nous fondons sur les, la, la science traditionnelle, sur les, les données traditionnelles, que nous avons mis en place de Citizen Science, euh, qu'on appelle la science participative, où nous avons créé une application qu'on appelle Sirène. Et grâce à cette application, les pêcheurs peuvent documenter les observations opportunes de mammifères marins et des autres espèces, bien sûr. Et grâce à cette euh, application, nous avons aujourd'hui documenté près de 19 000 observations d'espèces de, 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 aquatiques, et parmi lesquelles plusieurs euh, espèces de mammifères marins dont je vais vous, présent, je vais vous euh, donner la liste tout à l'heure. Et nous faisons aussi des sorties en mer avec le bateau euh, pour pouvoir, n'est-ce pas, euh, de, euh, compter, identifier les espèces et aussi euh, faire l'estimation de la taille de la population. Tout récemment, avec euh, nos, notre partenaire, la National Geographic Society, nous avons envoyé euh, des, une caméra qu'on appelle le, euh, le Deep Sea euh, Camera, qui est une caméra qui permet de filmer dans les profondeurs. Euh, ça peut aller jusqu'à près de 3500 mètres de profondeur pour, n'est-ce pas, documenter les espèces qui se trouve dans nos fonds marins. Alors, et on, et sans oublier, n'est-ce pas, le, 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 le stranding, le, comment dire, le, le, bon, la, la, on fait des nécropsies, n'est-ce pas, on, fait des, on, on se parcourt des plages pour lorsqu'il y a des carcasses qui ont échoué, nous faisons de la nécropsie pour pouvoir dé déterminer les causes de mortalité. Alors, DC a permis de, euh, de, déjà de documenter près de 12 espèces de mammifères marins au Cameroun, parmi lesquelles 5 sont euh, classées dans, sont dans la classe A de, de, de n'est-ce pas, des espèces protégées du Cameroun, mais aussi euh, en, une espèce en danger critique d'inspection. Et cela aussi euh, permet, n'est-ce pas, de développer une stratégie qui, a, qui permet de réduire, n'est-ce pas, le bycatch et de mettre en place aussi des activités alternatives de revenus. Alors, voilà un peu les espèces que nous retrouvons au niveau du Cameroun, que nous avons pu documenter à travers notre Citizen Science et les autres méthodes que j'ai présentées plus haut. Euh, je vais passer rapidement en question du temps. Donc, nous avons euh, la montagne d'Afrique, euh, nous avons, euh, nous avons les, euh, la, baleine, euh, la baleine à Beauce. Euh, une seconde, je dois juger ça. Donc, nous avons la baleine à Beauce, nous avons les cachalots, nous avons euh, le cachalot nain, euh, nous avons le dauphin à bosse de l'Atlantique, une espèce très menacée, et très importante. Et je tiens aussi à noter ici que euh, nous travaillons en collaboration avec le CCHD, qui est le euh, consortium pour la conservation de, euh, de, de, de la baleine à bosse de l'Atlantique, euh, qui couvre près de, euh, qui, recue, qui regroupe de, près de 21 pays n'est-ce pas, organisations et recherches qui travaillent pour la protection euh, du dauphin à bourse et des autres espèces de mammifères marins. Alors, nous avons aussi euh, le, le, grand, le grand dauphin, le grand dauphin, euh, le grand dauphin qui est très, euh, très fréquent sur, sur nos côtes et euh, le dauphin commun qu'on retrouve aussi abondamment euh, et ce qu'on appelle le script dolphin, je ne sais pas plus prouver le nom en français, et finalement, le Spina Dolphin aussi, euh, Atlantic Sported Dolphin, 
Voilà. Et aussi, je tenais à noter que les données que nous avons collectées ont aussi permis de euh, faire un plaidoyer auprès de l'administration camerounaise pour la protection de quatre espèces de mammifères marins. Ça, c'était en 2020. À l'époque, il n'y avait que le lamantin d'Afrique qui apparaissait parmi les espèces, euh, des espèces de mammifères marins intégralement protégées au Cameroun. Donc, grâce aux données des sirènes et aux plaidoyers que nous avons fait, aujourd'hui, nous avons quatre autres espèces que vous voyez, j'ai souligné en jaune, qui désormais sont intégralement protégées au Cameroun. Alors, comme perspective, donc, euh, nous, euh, en dehors des, des approches que j'ai déjà présentées tout à l'heure, nous aimons aussi, n'est-ce pas, commencer à faire des analyses euh, génétiques comme l'IDN, l'ADN environnemental, pour pouvoir documenter la distribution de certaines espèces de mammifères marins, aussi renforcer la capacité des, des équipes au niveau du Cameroun et même de, de la sous-région en termes de recherche sur les espèces de mammifères marins et aussi à améliorer la connaissance des, des différentes parties prenantes sur l'impact à les pêcheries, les industries, sur les communautés locales, sur ces espèces-là. Parce que très peu de personnes savent même d'abord que ces espèces existent et très peu savent même qu'elles sont menacées, très peu encore savent qu'elles sont menacées. Et nous voulons aussi contribuer à, à renforcer, n'est-ce pas, les mesures de conservation, n'est-ce pas, dans les... Dans les euh, Marine, les aires marines protégées et renforcer aussi la loi qui protège ces espèces-là. Ça, c'est très important parce que les données que nous collectons, nous voulons les utiliser pour, n'est-ce pas, justifier la création des aires marines protégées. Ensuite, nous voulons aussi euh, améliorer la recherche à travers l'utilisation de la technologie acoustique, passif acoustique, qui sont des capteurs qu'on met sous l'eau et ça permet d'enregistrer de, les... les euh, euh, les, les sons produits par ces, par ces mammifères-là et qui est parfois plus efficace que les, que les, les, les approches observationnelles où il faut regarder à, à l'œil. Parfois, ces espèces ne sont pas facilement visibles avec les yeux, mais avec des capteurs sonores, on peut les détecter à des distances. Alors, il y a aussi question de faciliter pour nous, pour nous de faciliter la synergie entre les différentes parties prenantes. C'est pourquoi, depuis 2020-2021, nous, on organise un événement qu'on appelle le Street Wheel, qui réunit toutes les parties prenantes impliquées dans la conservation des écosystèmes marins et côtiers. Et, euh, et l'idée, c'est de pouvoir, n'est-ce pas, euh, Race Awareness est d'éveiller de, de, de des consciences sur la protection de ces espèces-là. Et nous, nous aimerions que cet événement, n'est-ce pas, au lieu, au lieu d'être seulement camerounais, que ça s'étende au niveau de la sous-région, l'Afrique centrale et pourquoi pas de l'Afrique de l'Ouest aussi. Donc, parce qu'il est important de mettre sur la même table les différentes parties prenantes, c'est-à-dire le gouvernement, le secteur privé, les universitaires, les pêcheurs que ce soit artisan ou industriel, sur la même table, parce que c'est ensemble qu'on peut aborder la question de protection de ces mammifères marins. Alors, sur ce, je vous euh, remercie et euh, j'ai hâte de d'apprendre de, de, de l'outil qui sera présenté tout à l'heure euh, parce que je pense que ça sera utile aussi pour nous pour pouvoir, n'est-ce pas, mieux à, améliorer la gestion de nos aires protégées au niveau du Cameroun. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Arisi, for that excellent, uh, excellent overview of the importance of marine mammals and also the diversity and species that can be found um, along West Africa, but also um, to the uh, to the actions being undertaken in Cameroon. And there's some excellent points raised there from um, stakeholder engagement, citizen science, and also um, the siren application as well. And I think. Um, that would make actually a very good example of a good practice that others can learn from and we'll be happy to to work with you on that one as well from the toolkits perspective um to 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 showcase that um application um and just before i move on to the next speaker uh, an additional thanks as well um arisi because i believe you're joining us from denver as well and it's super early in the morning and i believe you're also on on your vacation too so very much appreciated for your time and your and your presentation and um, look forward to our future collaborations as well so again thank you very much thank you thank you so excellent so that brings us very nicely into the next agenda item um and it's my pleasure to to welcome uh, Francis Storb, who's the core expert of the marine mammal twinning, um, to provide us all with an introduction to the marine mammals management toolkit. So Francis, over to you. 
Merci Thomas, bonjour à tous. Bien que je parle très bien français, et ton français, je vais faire cette présentation en anglais parce que c'est à peu près la septième fois que je la fais, et en anglais, et beaucoup de mots en anglais, j'ai du mal à les traduire en français, donc je vais maintenant parler en anglais. So, welcome everybody, I'm going to speak in English. Next slide, please. So just a brief overview of, of the project. So the, all the materials, the toolkits, the self-assessment tools that are going to be presented with you have been developed within the, within the framework of, of an European Union funded project, which is called the Ocean Governance Project. The project has four components. I won't go in detail on the fourth component. Next slide, please. And all our work sits within component two. The aim of component two was to improve management of marine protected area. And uh, there is three core training, one on marine mammals, so the one we're presenting today, one on MPA resilience. I think most of you uh, are fully aware of this, uh, of this training since I know like some Some training have been done in the region, and the last one is also the MPA network training, and I think a lot of you are also very familiar with this training. Next slide, please. So the main objective of the marine mammal training were to develop technical capacity of MPA manager by sharing knowledge, expertise, and good practice on marine mammals, were to provide MPA with effective tool to improve the management of marine mammals. So this is a self-assessment tool, which is going to be presented uh, later by Tom. And the third one was to create a community of practice where MPA manager and other stakeholders can network, share knowledge, experience, and exchange. Next slide, please. So I, I, I always like to show this slide because uh, Tom or I are not like marine mammal specialists, so we work on this project for almost three years, four years now, but we are not marine mammal specialists at all, but uh, we involve a lot of marine mammal specialists, so we receive a lot of guidelines, a lot of comments, a lot of support from people already involved in marine mammal conservation. So the first group of experts were MPM manager with marine mammals. So you can see on the slide, like there is four MPA, the Agoa Sanctuary, which is like a marine mammal sanctuary in the Caribbean, the Irwas Marine Nature Park, which is also like a marine mammal sanctuary in, uh, in Brest, in France, the Stelwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary, which is like uh, off, the, off the coast of Boston, and which is very, very well known for uh, ship traffic, but also for whale watching. And the latest MPA involved in this project was the Yari Marine Mammal Shark and Sanctuary. We also have like some national government involved, so Ministry of uh, Environment of Cap Verde, Government of Bermuda, or uh, Government of Canada. And we also have other stakeholders, so University of Iceland, which is working a lot on whale watching, like the SPORAC, which is a, a regional organization in the Caribbean, which is also implementing a project on marine mammal, ACOBAM, the so International Whaling Commission, or, Well, dolphin conservation, like the Convention of Migratory Species, so a lot of stakeholders involved in, in, in marine mammal management and conservation. So this, again, like all the work which is going to be presented, was done with their very valuable input. Thank you. Next slide. So the toolkit. So what is the toolkit? So the toolkit, it's, a, it's an online toolkit. It was created for the inclusion of marine mammal into MPA. The objective of the toolkit is to help technical capacity, to help develop technical capacity of MPA manager by sharing expertise and good practice. It has four main components. One is the fact sheet, which I'm going to present very quickly. One, as mentioned, is the self-assessment tool, which Tom is going to be presenting just after my presentation. And the two other uh, main components of the toolkit are the committee of practice, And the good practice that Tom mentioned briefly when he, when he, when he reminded that Siren could be a very good example. Next slide, please. So this is the home page of the, of the online toolkit. Just for your information, this toolkit is available in over uh, 29 languages. So there is like a translation module on the bottom right of the page. So if you click on this, you can find, uh, you can find it in Spanish, French, English, Portuguese, and many other languages. Next slide, please. 
So fact sheets. So the, this is the first component of the of the toolkit. So fact sheets are like two to four page document uh, addressing uh, one important topic in terms of uh, marine mammal conservation. Uh, they were developed and designed to accompany the self assessment tool. They are constantly uh, being updated based on new good practice or new report published. So we always try to maintain this uh, up to date. And they are organized among five core themes, which is management framework, addressing activities in threats, research and monitoring, outreach and engagement, and management effectiveness. And the latest fact sheet we, we published was on climate change, and it's a fact sheet I'm going to present now. Next slide, please. So it was uh, the fact sheet is about climate change implication on marine mammals management. So there is a small introduction about uh, the topic. Next slide, please. After in most of the fact sheet, there is some case studies about like how an MPA did address uh, this topic. Next slide, please. And at the bottom of the fact sheet, you will find like a list of resources of, of reference, uh, we, which uh, will provide like latest studies or, uh, or guidelines or other useful information. Again, this is being uh, updated on a very regular basis. And also a lot of the fact sheet have been done and developed uh, in collaboration with experts in the topic. For instance, the fact sheet on, uh, on climate change was developed with uh, two researchers from the University of Auckland. Next slide, please. So the community of practice. So the idea of, of the community of practice was to create a forum uh, to discuss idea, challenge, and management solution for, uh, for the user of the toolkit and the user of the self-assessment tool. So everybody can join and be a manager or over uh, over uh, stakeholders. Uh, there is few moderators on, uh, on, the, on the forum, so you can address your, uh, your question directly to, to experts uh, who will be able to reply. Uh, when we created the committee of practice, we really wanted the, this, this forum to be used for the user of the SAT. So basically, every time you had a question about how to use the SAT, how can I interpret my result or things like this? We will be able to, to, to ask a question to one of the experts. And it works like a mailing list. So once you register, you, you, you receive like, a, you can receive like d d daily digest or a message how, how they're going to post it. Thank you. Next slide. So the, the next uh, and the third component of the, of the toolkit, it's what we call the good practice. So we develop a template for good practice, which can be found on, on the website. And we encourage uh, our colleagues and people attending the webinar or other, other, other colleagues like to, to submit some good practice. It's always a uh, good like to see what has been implemented in other region of the world to, to see if it can be replicable, if it can be applied apply to my region. So when I saw like the the slide on Sirene, uh, I, I really think this could uh, this could be like feature as a good practice. I think it's a, it's a very good application. So I would love I would love to work with Aristide on this and create a, a, a new uh, a new good practice on this. Next slide, please. In addition to, to all of these uh, core, uh, core uh, component of the toolkit, we, we also have created or still creating some supporting resources in order to allow people to better understand how to use the toolkit or the fact sheet. So we have developed several uh, online uh, tutorials. So right now there is three videos which are available in English, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. We are planning to develop two other videos. They are about how, you to, how to use the toolkit, how to use the self-assessment tool, how to interpret my results. So all the resources are on the website and under the supporting resource uh, tab. And there is also like a frequently asked question. Next slide, please. Finally, and it's uh, I think it's it's an important uh, slide because it's important to mention like by uh, 
enhancing the management effectiveness of, uh, of protected area, we will also be able to contribute to the to several targets of the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, which was recently adopted. So the, fem, the four main targets that the toolkit is able to contribute to is the target one about like biodiversity, is target three that everybody knows, knows about like the 30 by 30, it's target four about like urgent management action and it's target 21 about like uh, data and information sharing. So this is more for the, for the um, toolkit in general. It also contributes to the Convention on Migratory Species Strategic Plan 2015-2023, and especially this objective too. Thank you. Next slide, please. And I think this is my uh, my last slide. So how, how can you get involved? So there is few ways you can get involved, like you can join the community of practice. So this is very easy to do. You can also like propose new topic for the fact sheet or propose to review some existing fact sheets. So we will all will be very happy to work with you on new fact sheet or, 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 or maybe like engage you in reviewing fact sheet. As I mentioned it earlier, like submit good practice. It's always good like to, to have example of what works in other part of the world or even in the same region. And finally, we're always happy to, to co-organize uh, with you some webinar, even at the regional level, or it could also be at the national level. So don't hesitate to contact us. I think it's a, it's a good way to, to spread the word and to build capacity around the toolkit and the self-assessment tool. I think it was my last slide. So thank you very much. Tom, over to you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Francis, and um, uh, an, an overview of the of the toolkit and all of its various components. Um, and just to emphasize Francis's point in terms of uh, seeking and welcoming your involvement in um, the strengthening of various resources or the addition of new resources as well. We're, we're really interested to hear about your efforts um, and experiences um, in your areas in terms of the conservation and management of, of marine mammals. And I can see, and I'll, and I'll thank Lucy in the chat as well for, for offering your um, support in, 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 in strengthening the toolkit with respect to manatee information. And that's very much welcome. So thank you very much. Excellent. So, so following Francis' presentation, Francis noted uh, with respect to the self-assessment tool. Um, so for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, I'll provide you with a, a bit more of an in-depth overview of the self-assessment tool, sort of how it functions, the results and how you can interpret um, how you can interpret those results. So just much like the toolkit itself, the, the self-assessment tool um, was was really designed for the benefit of MPA managers or protected area managers and other stakeholders really to understand the level of protection um, that was afforded to marine mammals uh, within MPA or uh, management plans. We do also recognise that there are many other management effectiveness tools that are available, such as the IMET tool and the MET4 tool. Um, however, this, this tool really came about from a desk review and analysis that, that found that whilst these other tools existed and referenced marine mammals, there was no specific tool dedicated for marine mammals. And because of that, and because as um, I received presented, uh, there are many marine mammal species that are under threat and critically endangered. So we felt that a dedicated marine mammals tool was very much needed. So the self-assessment tool itself is available both offline in Excel format, and it's also available online as a web-based web tool. And both tools are exactly the same. They're just accessible um, both uh, online and offline. And essentially, the self-assessment tool functions as, a, uh, as, as multiple guided choice questions. And the multiple choice answers for those questions, depending on your selection, are then awarded a score or a mark. And then at the end, those scores produce a dashboard which provides you with greater insight into the efficacy of your management plan for marine mammals. And both tools are available um, in French, Spanish and English. 
So the self-assessment tool allows um, not only to identify possible gaps in the management plan um, that may need addressing to strengthen uh, marine mammal management, but it also demonstrates your, your strength. So it demonstrates where your MPA management plan is performing well um, and can help you direct your resources accordingly. It can be used as a uh, in, in a single time assessment to understand um, a snapshot, so to speak, of, of, of the management plan. But it can also be used over multiple time scales, so temporal monitoring, and in doing so, allows you to uh, practice adaptive management. So after your first assessment, you can understand the actions that may need to uh, may need taking, and um, you can implement those, and then you can reassess to to understand the impact. Um, of those management decisions. And of course, it can also be used um, throughout all stages of an MPA development. It doesn't have to be established. It can be used to, um, to assess uh, a draft management plan um, before it's um, in, in place. And of course, it can be used further down the line um, as well in terms of re reviewing and reevaluating management plans um, for their redevelopment. And it's a really valuable capacity building tool as well for not only MPA managers, um, and marine users, but also general stakeholders and anyone interested in marine mammal conservation. So Francis showed you this slide or, already. Um, oh, yes. This is the, the homepage of the toolkit. Um, and to access the self-assessment tool, you can, um, you can see self-assessment tool in the top navigation bar. So once you click on that, you'll be welcomed with this page, which provides us with a quick introduction to the self-assessment tool. Um, but also importantly, provide you access to the various self-assessment tools. And you can see those along the bottom under the associated documents section. So you can see we have the English version, the French version and the Spanish version. Um, and you can also access the web-based self-assessment tool from this panel as well. And for the benefit of this webinar, um, this webinar for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, we'll be going through the Excel version, uh, the English Excel version of this self-assessment tool. So once you've decided which version you would like to use, um, what language, um, you can move forward and download that. And then once it's downloaded and opened, um, please do select um, to enable macros. Um, the macros uh, allow for the results to be generated in the dashboard. So make sure you select enable macros. And once it's opened, you'll be met with um, a few different pages and the first one being really just a, a record for uh, the name and email contact information and the date of the assessor and when uh, the assessment is being undertaken. So once you've inputted that data, you can then navigate throughout the self-assessment tool using the contents uh, page, which we can see on the top right here. And really, this is just starting to, to, to implement good data practices in terms of recording um, who um, undertook the assessment when it was undertaken and also the contact information um, of the person undertaking the assessment. So before we move into the actual assessment um, of the management plan, uh, we do, uh, the, the, the tool asks you for, for some various pieces of data and information with respect to the MPA. So specifically the location, its coordinates, when it was established and the various status um, of the MPA. Other things, including IUCN category, the type of governance and the management authority, really important information to help contextualize um, the, uh, the, 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 the assessment and the MPA. You can also see that on various questions, um, there are information tabs, which again are to, to help guide you through answering various questions. And on the right hand side, we also have an answer guide as well. Just just trying to aid you um, in terms of the information um, to include on this sheet. And there are also some definitions as well that you can access. You'll see on the bottom, there are three further categories. We also have uh, marine mammal species, main uses in and around the MPA and main pressures. The answers to these points do not influence the questions that you are asked in the, in the self-assessment tool. It's really to start um, having the assessor think about um, the various uh, uses, possible pressures around the MPA, and also especially when working with colleagues in between organizations and ministries, um, depending on who is undertaking this effort, may have different um, opinions on sort of those main uses pressures and also the, the species that um, they may see in and around uh, the MPA. But those three sections are, um, are optional for you to complete.
So once you've implemented, uh, once you've, sorry, once you've answered all these questions, um, we can then move forward into the actual um, assessment itself and to start um, answering the various questions. Here for this example, um, we'll be using the addressing activities and threats um, theme, um, but the, this is replicated throughout those five core themes uh, that um, that Francis uh, mentioned earlier. So management framework, addressing activities and threats, outreach and engagement, research and monitoring, and management effectiveness. But here we can see the activities and threats. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we have the questions. In the middle column is where you select your answers. Um, and on the right-hand side, you can type in any various comments. Really important if you are saving and sending the self-assessment tool to another colleague to complete, or if you need further data, you can insert a comment um, to mark your place so you can come back at a later stage. And with respect to the answers, you can see that they're, very, they're, they're, they're relatively simple. So you have yes, no, and you also have not applicable as well. So if a question is not applicable to your MPA um, or protected area, you can select not applicable um, and it won't be awarded a mark. So it isn't affecting your overall score at the end. While the majority of questions are uh, answers, sorry, are yes, no, not applicable. There are some other questions that are a bit more subjective and a bit uh, broader as well. So here on the research and monitoring um, theme, we can see um, an example uh, with respect to the knowledge of the ecological status of marine mammals in the area being assessed. It, one of the, the optional question uh, answers that you have are substantial and detailed, moderate, limited or not. So you have to, so asking you to select the one that most applies to your, to your area. These answers are, are super important. Uh, to know when you are uh, completing the assessment that we recommend that you work collaboratively with colleagues um, and also between um, different organizations simply because of not only the subjectiveness of the answers, but also the subjectiveness of the questions as well. They may be interpreted, interpreted slightly differently. So once you've answered all the questions and you do need to answer all the questions, if one is missed, then it will prevent the scores being produced you can access the dashboard, uh, which pr provides you with your results um, based on your answers to the previous questions. So in the top left hand Hello. corner, we, we can see- We can see that um, the breakdown across the five core themes, um, we have our score, our maximum score, and also our percentage award score. And in this example, we can see that the management framework um, is, is one of the highest scoring, where is management effectiveness with a score of 45% may need some further attention. These scores are then translated into the management effectiveness score, which is seen on the top right hand side. And we, in this example, we received a score of 6.9 more. Below the two figures just better graphically represent um, the scores in the top left hand corner. So we can see uh, a visual representation of, of those scores on the left a radar plot and on the right a bar chart comparing your score with your maximum score. And um, below this in the uh, on the dashboard, you can also see you will also be able to see a breakdown across your threats and activities as well. So you can try and address and limit the impact of various activities and threats. So I like to show this infographic because it demonstrates the value of using the self-assessment tool over a, over a, a multiple time series. So here, when the MPA is established in year zero, for example, um, we can see that the self-assessment tool uh, produced a score of 3.4. Now, understanding those results and understanding those possible strengths or gaps that need addressing in the management framework, we can implement or take informed management decisions. Once we've implemented those and, and taken those management decisions, we then may decide to do another assessment, this time in year three. And because of the impact of those management decisions, we can see that our management effectiveness score has increased to 6.1. And again, understanding gaps and strengths in the management plan, we can implement further management decisions, and we may wish to take another assessment in year six. And here we can see an increase in um, management effectiveness to 8.3. And you can see um, across all of those five themes in the bar chart, they have all increased as well. So whilst it's valuable in a, as, as, as a single uh, snapshot to understand 
um, the effectiveness of your management plan when we put it in a temporal scale over multiple years, hopefully we can see an increase in management effectiveness, which of course uh, benefits uh, marine mammals in the area. Um, just very quickly, the, um, the self-assessment tool has been used um, by 25 MPAs now um, across 19 different countries, uh, ranging from um, established MPAs in marine mammal sanctuaries to uh, analyzing and assessing um, draft management plans before an MPA or a moon mammal sanctuary um, is established. And whilst I can say the, the value of, of using this tool, I think it's always beneficial um, to note that we do have success stories from other MPAs that have used it. And um, Francis uh, previously mentioned our partners, one of which being Stellwagen Bank National Marine Sanctuary, um, who have used the self-assessment to reevaluate their management plan to develop um, a more effective uh, management plan. The tool is being used in Bermuda to assess a management plan for a marine mammal sanctuary, which will stretch across the entire um, exclusive economic zone of Bermuda. Um, and also we're hoping that um, through the use of the self-assessment tool that the first NPA in Iceland will be designated um, in the coming year. So very, uh, I very quickly provided you with an overview of the full self-assessment tool, um, which has around about 120 questions and takes uh, approximately two hours um, to complete. But we recognize that not everybody has two hours spare time um, to undertake the, self, the full self-assessment um, over and over again. So in doing so, in doing that, in, in that recognition, we developed a shorter version of the self-assessment tool, which is called the satellite. And the satellite is really designed to be able to provide a rapid assessment of a management plan, but also to act and guide an MPA manager to whether it's recommended for them to undertake a full assessment. So based on your results in the in the light version, it will it will prompt you whether or not you should undertake a full assessment. And the satellite has around about 50 questions and takes between 30 minutes to an hour to complete. So the function is very similar. It's uh, guided questions with multiple choice um, answers. Um, but also here, there's a uh, there, there are slightly different questions where we ask you to um, input your level of concern or your perceived um, level of concern with respect to certain um, threats and activities uh, within the area. So here we can we can see in this example that noise is perceived to have a very high level of concern, whereas ship strikes is fairly low in the example area. So again, once you move through the self uh, the satellite and answer all the questions, you'll be met with a dashboard. It's slightly different to the to the full assessment, as you can see. Um, however, on the right hand side, we can see the sort of critical points of this dashboard. So, should I complete a full assessment? In this example, the recommendation is yes. A full assessment should be completed with special attention given to um, the below themes. And when we're looking at those scores, we can see research and monitoring and outreach and engagement really need some attention in this management plan. And we can also see below with respect to the perceived threats and levels of concern based on your answers there, the dashboard will prompt you to review the various fact sheets that we have available on the toolkit to help you um, address um, those activities and threats in your management plan. So, 15 minutes isn't really enough time to, to provide you with an in-depth uh, overview of, of the self-assessment tools, specifically looking at um, individual cases. Um, but also I appreciate that there are lots of components and various uh, working parts to this toolkit. Um, so on, on online, you will also find a uh, sort of flow chart that will hopefully help you um, identify which components um, would be best suited to your situation. Um, and that will hopefully guide you through through that process. But that being said, we are also here and we are available to help you as well. So if you do have questions, if you would like to undertake the self-assessment tool, but not really sure where to start or the information or data that you require, please do reach out to us. Um, and myself and friends is more than happy um, to help you um, in, those, um, in, in completing that self-assessment. So, with all that being said, I believe I'm slightly over time, so my apologies to everybody. Um, however, um, 
as mentioned, just like the success stories, it's very easy for Francis and I to, to present this tool to you to, to recommend you using it. But I think the true value comes in when we can um, when we can hear from somebody who's actually used the self-assessment tool to understand um, the effectiveness of their management plans and also to make informed management decisions. Um, so very pleased to, to welcome back um, Dr. Makami Makami from um, the Department of Marine Conservation, Ministry of Blue Economy and Fisheries in Zanzibar um, to provide us with a testimonial and his experiences on using the self-assessment tool. So Makami, over to you. Are you with us, Macaulay? He's, he, he, he's online, so I'm not sure what's going on, but maybe if if you have some questions, if si vous avez des questions, peut-être qu'on peut, peut en prendre quelques-unes en attendant que Dr. Makami se connecte. Merci. Hello. I'm We can hear you. Fine, and you? Oh, good, thank you. The floor is yours when you're ready. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm in Dar es Salaam today. Right, the we on fun meeting. No problem. Yeah. Do you do, are you able to share your screen, or would you like me to share for you? I think I can. Let me try. Um, Is it okay? We can see your screen. We can hear you. Just waiting for it to go into presentation mode. Perfect. Over to you. Okay, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, has, it has been introduced. My name is Makame Omar Makame, uh, Director, Department of Marine Conservation, Zanzibar within the Ministry of Blue Economy and the uh, fisheries. Uh, in, uh, in Zanzibar, we, we did this toolkit, and uh, we can say they sat for three of our marine conservation area. And uh, we got a, a good result that uh, will help us in uh, in the future plan within our marine area. So in Zanzibar, we have uh, five uh, marine conservation area, four in main island, we call it Nguja or famously called Zanzibar. But also we have uh, one in Pemba. So out of these five, we, we took this test for three of them. This is MPCA, meaning Menai Bay Marine Conservation Area, uh, PECA, Pemba Channel Marine Conservation Area, and the Chabamka Changu Bawe Marine Conservation Area. So this, this slide just explaining how we do business in our marine conservation area from director to to manager in the specific MCAs in collaboration with the fisheries, uh, village fisheries committee, including stakeholder management committee. It's just a structure on how we, we do our business. So this is just a slide show the richness of resources we have in our shore, especially in our marine area. 
we have cultural kind of uh, resources, we have scenic, but also we have biodiversity. So in biodiversity, we have marine mammals, especially whales, dolphin, and uh, a little bit of dugo, not much of dugo. We have a, a fish fauna, a land refugia, bad, bad area that they considered as important bad area, but also most of our marine conservation area are considered as imma, important uh, area for marine mammals. So uh, our goal in Zanzibar is to restore and conserve uh, the diversity and the abundant uh, and the ecological integrity of all physical and biological resources in our MCS so that they may be enjoyed and used productively and sustainably by present and future generations. Below, you see some of the pictures of, uh, of the marine mammal uh, we have. So what are the results? As I said, in Zanzibar, we did uh, we use this toolkit in three of our of our marine conservation area. The result pretty much the same because although all these five they are managed by a single entity, my department, Department of Marine Conservation. So some of the issues, or, or, or I can say, all of the management criteria or issues that are that are assessed within the within the kit, almost the same in all of marine uh, marine areas. So this is the the results. I think you have gone through the tool by Tom and uh, Francis. So, but this is the re the real result that we 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 got after the one of the of the of the MPA. This is the result of one of the MPA that have uh, undergone through this process. So you can see with regard to man manage marine management groups score, where you have a lot of issues assessed like management framework, activities and threats, research and monitoring, outreach engagement, and management effectiveness. You can see out of 278 maximum score, we managed to score 43. So you can see we score very, very low. But on, your, on, your, on, my, on my right side, you can see the score is, the, the overall score is 1.5. 1. 1. Uh, 1. If you go to specific, it's like, MPA management effectiveness, how the, 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 our current management is, effect, is effective in terms of conservation and management of uh, uh, marine mammals. You can see the blue one is the maximum uh, that we are supposed to score, but then we manage the, the, the yellow one, I think the green one, sorry, the one that we managed to score. So, we score a little bit higher in framework because like we have policy, we have legislation, but again, we can see we, 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 miss, we missed a lot of issues like guidelines. We don't have regulations specific, for example, for marine mammals, for the well uh, regulation that guide dolphin tourism, for example, a regulation that guide marine, uh, wells tourism, et cetera, et cetera, because all these activities put pressure on, on that, but also we have issue of marine transport, et cetera, et cetera. They need to be regulated within the area, but in most cases, we don't have those kind of, uh, of tool yet. Activities and threats, issues of sound, uh, sound, et cetera, et cetera. You can see we almost score nil. You see only blue, that the, the maximum score, but for us, we have nil. So we have a, a lot of problem there in dealing with the threats and activities. Research and monitoring, a little bit we have scored because we had a quite good number of research previously, but currently 
uh, nothing is happening in terms of marine mammal research. Uh, we have few experts that can, can do that. Uh, but also outreach, you can see outreach a little bit we have managed to score. We do have, if you look, if you go back to our structure, you can see we are go up to the village level where we deal with the village fisheries committee. So we are there. But the only problem, most of our, our outreach these days, they are not related specific on marine mammal and dolphin. So we, man, we score, but we still have gaps that need to be, to be dealt with. Again, in, a, in the MP activities at, and the threats, as I mentioned in, a, in, the, in the previous slide, we also scored, you can see 0000, zero, zero, zero means we have nothing uh, in noise management that has a, a, about a lot of issues tested or assessed, but we are doing none of those. Well, Dolphin and Serenia watching, we don't have deadlines, regulation that are guiding those kind of uh, tourism activities for, for watching. The marine mammal bycatch, we have an issue for very big issues for, 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 for issues for fisheries, especially for dolphin. We also experience currently because recently we have large amount of oil pass across our, our areas. But sometimes uh, our fishers during the well season, they also use nets. So the thing that we need to discuss with the fishermen, at least during the time when we have a, a well visiting our shore, July, August, September, October, November, at least fisher reduce the use of uh, nets in those areas. So currently we are getting a lot of phone call for for strandings, but also an, an entanglement because of those. Sometimes for dolphin, we are getting new information that some of the fishers purposely uh, uh, catching the catching the dolphin, but this uh, is not that big issues. But some of the of the of the fisher they can they can catch dolphin as a bycatch, but they can still not taking it back to the ocean. So because we don't have those guidelines, regulations, limited outreach with regard to, to marine mammals. So you can see we also uh, perform badly. But this uh, test is very important to us. Although we, you, you can see we have scored very little or very low, but it, it's like it opened our eyes like we need to do something because marine mammal not only important for 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 tourists for tourism sector that it is important for the Zanzibar economy but also for the for the livelihood of the of the people those are engaged in this tourism so we 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 have again a lot out of taking this assessment so you see like this taste provided a uh, objective uh, provided objective data that helped us to identify our strength and weakness, as you have seen. Overall score is very low, as you have seen uh, in, in many categories and assessment, but it helped us in several ways in the future planning, review our general management plan, et cetera, et cetera, in order at least, and, and, and us also to contribute in the global efforts toward the conservation of, of these very important uh, species. The tool also helped us to understand our existing situation with regard to marine mammals, conservation and management, but also the tool is like, as I have uh, uh, said earlier, it was like an eye opening. It was a, it's like, it helped us now to see, hey, we, we are lagging behind. There is a, a number of issues that we are not uh, putting in our, in our GMPs, but also in our daily kind of activities toward conserving these, uh, uh, these animals, which are very important to our tourism sector. So it's like it helps us to, to, to awake us toward uh, conservation of these. So it, it was very important. So the two.
so uh, because of uh, the the test we took, now we have started to think about how we can uh, we can review our GMPs, but also how we can integrate marine mammal issues within our our plan, but also in our activities like outreaches, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like to start with, we said. We, we, we have a plan to establish a sanctuary for dolphin. We have an area. Currently, some of the tour operators, they don't send uh, their, 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 their clients in, in that area, which is very famous. It used to be very famous for dolphin because like the number of dolphin has been redu has reduced in that area because probably illegal fishing, but also that uh, what we call unregulated tourism, uh, uh, dolphin watching tourism. So we want to create a sanctuary where we could minimize fishing activities or at least selecting type of gears to be used in that, in that particular area. So that to restore the, 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 the area and to, to restore also uh, dolphin tourism in that area. But also we are thinking uh, of launching a formal world tourism. Now we have world tourism, but not that formal. So we want to launch it formally so that we could regulate it, putting regulation, putting down guidelines, who is supposed to take tourists there, what type of boats, et cetera, et cetera, how they are supposed to behave. Uh, so we thought if we, if, we, if, we, if we start this world tourism, it will like, uh, pushing us toward regulating these uh, activities and uh, therefore we'll be able to, to, to contribute in the conservation. Then we talk about developing guidelines and regulations. As I said, issue of entanglement, we are getting phone calls, especially during world season, a lot of phone calls from fishers. Uh, my name has been taken by, by the well or oh, there is a well has been entangled somewhere but we, 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 our rangers, they don't have that capacity. They don't have knowledge. Apart from having guidelines and regulations, apart from that, we don't have guidelines and regulations, but also we, we, we like our rangers, they don't have that capacity to deal with some of these uh, situations that we really, so this kind of test, it, it help us. Yes, we really need to have uh, this kind of guideline when entanglement happen, what we are supposed to do and those kind of issues. We may not do everything because there is a resource issues, but at least we do something. We, we do something step by step. And uh, as it has been uh, identified by Tom, maybe when we take the test uh, 2026, 20, we'll be somewhere. Probably we'll score higher than what we have score now. But again, we also in thinking of re increasing resources allocation because as I said, marine mammal, it's very important for Zanzibar tourism. So to increase the experience of our guests, but also to increase the, the, the healthy of our ocean, we need to do something. So for, we will start uh, increasing resources in this, uh, in this the, 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 the activity that we are planning to do so that we, we, we could be in a, in a good position to, to, to manage. The overall, I, I can say this tool is very important because we did it and we see the importance of, the, of, 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 of this tool. It was a, an eye opening. It will help us now thinking wider on what we are supposed to do to conserve the, the marine mammals and the, the et, cetera, et cetera. So it's very important. And I urge the participants, uh, MPA managers in this, uh, in this group who are participating in this uh, webinar, if they haven't done, or if have, they haven't checked this test or took this test, they need to do so because it's very, very, helpful. So with that note, I would like to thank you everyone, but also Tom and Francis for, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Makame. And 
it sounds like it's lunchtime at your uh, at your conference but uh, th thank you for persevering and, and and providing us with that with that testimonial and i always like listening to your to your testimonial because you you use the phrase it, it opened your eyes and and i think that's a, a really nice way of putting it that um, not only um did it uh, broaden your understanding of the actions that needed to be done but then it also got you thinking about those necessary management actions um those necessary management actions that are that are required as well and that list of your of your next steps is 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 is, is super valuable and i can see that there were some questions in the chat as well about how the toolkit uh, the self assessment tool allows you to uh, make those decisions and of course um, we have the fact sheets and good practices and the community of practice as well which can further help um, in developing and understanding those next management steps so um, again thank you very much Makami um, for your for your presentation. Um, we have about uh, we just have a couple of minutes so I'll just pause we, we probably have time for, for for maybe one one question so um, I'm just going to pause there and if, if anybody does have have a question please do um raise your hand um so we do have time for maybe one question um... oh je, je voudrais poser une question je sais pas si vous m'entendez tom très bien très bien merci si vous pouvez juste vous présenter je vous remercie oui c'est c'est docteur bami de, de la guinée conakry Et je travaille au centre, de, je suis le directeur du centre de recherche de Boussoula en Guinée et en même temps spécialiste pour les questions de mammifères marins et d'hydrobiologie. J'ai suivi avec passion les exposés et sur les activités concernant les cétacés dans ces régions. Mais la question que je voudrais poser aux deux, à Tom et le dernier intervenant, Et j'ai vu dans, son, dans un de ses tableaux que concernant les bycaches, il n'y a pas de 0%. Le dernier. Et la question que je lui pose, parce que moi j'ai longtemps travaillé sur la migration des, des baleines à bosse, qui migrent à un moment vers la côte guinéenne pour une question de reproduction, j'ai fait un article qui a été consulté par beaucoup de chercheurs et qui a été confirmé par beaucoup de chercheurs. J'aimerais savoir, est-ce que vers Zanzibar, je crois que le dernier exposant, je crois qu'il est au Zanzibar, est-ce que euh, l'apparition de ces espèces euh, au Zanzibar, c'est à quelle période de l'année Est-ce qu'ils ont constaté de et des prises accidentelles comme nous on a constaté c'est pas tant des prises accidentelles ici que j'ai recensé depuis 20 ans et finalement qu'on arrive à une conclusion on a vu que non seulement les espèces là à partir d'août venaient faire leur août jusqu'en septembre venaient sur les côtes guinéennes et l'année on n'arrive pas à les reprendre les expériences est-ce que euh, ce phénomène est constaté vers le Zanzibar parce que je n'ai pas vu euh, d'explication concernant cela je vous remercie vous m'avez entendu vous m'avez compris bah moi très bien allô euh, je... oui oui je vous a très bien entendu voilà, moi voilà. c'était très bien donc c'est ma question je, je suis pas fort en anglais hein. je, je... Voilà, je comprends un peu l'anglais, mais je ne peux pas bien m'exprimer en anglais. pour ça que je m'explique en français. Je vous remercie. Makame, did you, did you get the question or not really? Yeah. So, from, from what I understood, like the question was, uh, do you observe bycatch and if yes, when? And oui, what kind of species? OK. 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 C'est la, la, la seule réponse. Sorry, Francis, yeah. can you repeat the question? Do you, do you observe bycatch if yes, when, and 
what kind of species? No, as I said, currently, we don't have any kind of system that we we can follow up on the bycatch. The, the thing that we really need to put in a place with a guideline, a system, a kind of system that will help us uh, on, uh, especially in bycatch, especially for dolphin, but also turtles. But currently we don't have any. It's what I thought. That's why, unfortunately, you had the zero in your self-assessment too. So thank you. Alors, je ne sais pas si vous, avez, si vous avez entendu la réponse. En fait, à l'heure actuelle, ils ne font pas du tout de suivi du bycatch. Ils n'ont pas de système. Donc, c'est pour ça qu'il y avait zéro dans leur, dans leur outil. C'est qu'il n'y a pas de mesure euh, mise en place pour euh, su suivre le bycatch, les prises accidentelles. Et donc, c'est l'un des axes sur lesquels ils, ils souhaitent travailler dans le futur. Et donc, ils ont besoin d'aide de, de lignes directrices. Donc, peut-être peut que si vous partagez votre article, ils pourront peut-être le lire. Je vous remercie. J'espère que ça a répondu à votre question. Merci beaucoup. Merci. 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 Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you very, thank you very much for this question, uh, for that question, Serena. And I agree. If we, if if you're able to share that article, uh, then we can uh, then we can disseminate that, and also um, as well we can um, we can uh, provide contact details for for Makame as well, and um, so you can continue those discussions as well. Um, we'll just take this one last question, um, and then we'll need to move on. So. Um, Samela, the, the floor is yours for your question. Uh, merci. Merci pour la différence exposée. Ce que je vous ai dit, je suis docteur Silas Maïla du Centre de recherche océanologique Côte d'Ivoire. Et on, on observe souvent des mortalités de cétacés au niveau de la frontière Côte d'Ivoire-Ghana. Et c'est souvent répétitif. Euh, donc, euh, on ne sait pas pourquoi, mais on voit que les baleines sont souvent déroutées et puis se échouent sur les côtes. Ce que nous savons au niveau de cette zone, c'est qu'il y a une forte activité euh, de recherche pétrolière et d'exploitation pétrolière dans cette zone. Et également, au niveau de cette zone, euh, euh, les explorations peuvent euh, faire échouer ces baleines et une activité de pêche aussi industrielle dans la zone. Donc, euh, pour la protection de ces mammifères marins, dont nous savons qu'il y a une route des baleines qui part depuis le Ghana et, et qui remonte vers la Côte d'Ivoire. Donc, euh, même si nous avons un outil pour gérer, euh, planifier, gérer euh, les baleines. Mais s'il y a des mortalités qui se font comme ça, euh, on ne pourra pas protéger et conserver ces baleines. Je vous remercie. Mais, le, docteur Silla, mais merci beaucoup. Je pense que plus qu'une question, c'était un, une observation que, que, que je partage. Malheureusement, on ne peut pas faire grand-chose il euh, y, a, y a aussi tout, tout, tout les, euh, tous les problèmes liés au, au transport maritime on a, on a vu par moment que notamment il y a une très belle histoire et je, je partagerai le, le lien après ce, ce webinaire où, euh, où les routes ont été changées afin de permettre aux baleines de se reproduire c'est des belles histoires qui arrivent malheureusement pas assez mais nous à notre niveau on n'est pas là pour faire du, du lobby ou de la politique on est là pour essayer de, de fournir des outils aux, aux gestionnaires après il y a il y a tous les facteurs économiques et, et d'autres choses que, que malheureusement nous ne maîtrisons pas. Mais, mais merci de cette remarque. Thank you again for, 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 for the question and, and, and the remark and um, especially noting the, uh, the possibilities of those deaths and, and seeking further information, I would, I would really encourage you to join the community of practice and, and, and pose your questions in that community as well and see if anybody else has experienced 
um, those same situations and possibly has answers as well. I think one of the key things um, here is is exchanging knowledge and exchanging those experiences and management approaches as well. So again, thank you for your reflection and, um, and please do, I encourage you to, to join the community of practice. So that brings us um, on to sort of the, the the end of our webinar. So coming up to our um, our closing. So before I hand the floor um, back over to Francis for, for some um, closing remarks, I'd just like to remind you of um of of of, of a few things. So um how to how to get involved. We encourage you to use the self assessment tool. If there are still questions, please do reach out to us via email. We're very welcome for you to review the fact sheets, provide your own case studies and your experiences as well. Submit your good practices and if there are any lessons learned from your management experiences, we'll be happy to feature those as well. If you have any news, um, if you have any uh, uh, studies or developments that have been released, share those with us. We can um, include those on the website in the toolkit. And also again um, to join the community of practice. So please do visit the um, the toolkit, explore the components for yourself and all the, the rich resources that we have available. Um, and please also do um, get in touch with us. If anybody is interested in uh, receiving a uh, an attendance certificate for this webinar to recognize that you joined um, the, um, and, and learned about the Marine Mammals Management Toolkit, please do um, email us with your name um, for the certificate um, and also um, ideally your language of the certificate and we'll have that produced and sent over to you as well. Um, on the left is a, an example from um, from our work in North America. Um, and lastly, um, just a reminder of the email address and the um, URL um, that we have um, for the toolkit. And also, um, if you wish to join our newsletter, um, then you can do as well. And you can scan the QR code to join the community of practice. So that's enough from me. So Francis, over to you for, uh, for closing remarks. Merci beaucoup, Tom. Très, très, très rapidement. Donc, tout d'abord, j'ai été ravi de, de ce webinaire. L'Afrique de l'Ouest est une région que je connais plutôt bien, avec, dans laquelle j'ai beaucoup travaillé. Donc, c'est toujours un plaisir de, de revoir certaines têtes que je connais. Voilà. Donc, je souhaitais remercier le, le, partenariat, le partenariat régional pour la conservation de la zone côtière et marine, le PRCM ainsi que la Convention d'Abidjan pour leur collaboration sur ce webinaire. Euh, nous avons eu environ 70 personnes, je trouve que c'est un très bon, très bon score. Je souhaitais aussi remercier euh, les, les intervenants, et notamment no, notre collègue Aristide euh, qui s'est connecté de très bonne heure, mais aussi Makame qui, qui est toujours un plaisir, comme l'a dit Tom, c'est toujours un plaisir de l'écouter, et, et j'aime aussi sa franchise de ne pas hésiter à nous partager ses résultats, voilà, il sait qu'il y a des pistes d'amélioration, mais, mais il nous montre que utiliser l'outil peut permettre à, à engager des pistes de réflexion. Donc, ce qui est une très bonne chose. Et, et pour conclure, je, je souhaitais remercier tous les, tous les participants à ce webinaire. J'espère que vous l'avez trouvé utile et, et nous serons ravis de, de vous répondre à vos questions euh, par la suite, de vous aider à utiliser l'outil ou, ou de voir comment nous pouvons contribuer à, la, à une meilleure conservation des, des mammifères marins. Un grand merci et je vous souhaite à tous une bonne fin de journée. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you very much, Francis, and wish you all a pleasant rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Moni, we can end the webinar. Thank you.